Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Brandon Elliott. And in this episode, we are going to be covering how I got started investing in real estate, why, and at the end of the day, the importance behind credit and why I actually used credit versus all the other methods out there. You know, why didn't I jump into wholesaling right away? Why didn't I jump into fix and flip naturally right away or lending or whatever it may be or traditional route, right? So we'll dive all into that. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to all of our constant subscribers that have just showed so much support over the years. Appreciate you guys tremendously and all the five star ratings. Love you guys all so much. If you have not already hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? You're going to want to do that right now. So you get the newest notification every single Monday. Leave that five star afterwards. Greatly appreciate all love, all the support. You guys are amazing. All right, let's dive into it. So if you never connected with me yet, my name is Brandon Elliott. I'm originally from New Jersey. I live here in sunny San Diego, California, old town to be specific, and very blessed. At the end of the day, grew up with a single parent mother. Before I go into that, like in today's business, what we have is almost $10 million worth of real estate assets. I've done fix and flips. My main strategy is the Burr strategy, which is buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. Having little to no money into any of my deals. I have no money into any any of my active, like any of my portfolio at this point. We make about $48,000 a month off of what I call quote unquote passive income because uh, you definitely still need to. We haven't figured out the full passive yet unless we are lending. And so we do private money lending as well, hard money lending. We have been able to grow and scale Airbnb business, long-term rentals in four different states, Ohio, Arizona, San Diego, and New Jersey, where I'm from originally. And we are in syndications of you know 230 plus units as well. And what I'd say is being able to do all these things, it's been incredible and life-changing. Real estate has 1,000% changed my life, but credit was the thing that was able to like actually give it the alley-oop that it needed, right? To be able to help me out because I was just young, dumb, uneducated, no guidance. You know, I met my father when I was 18 years old in court so he could stop paying child support. I was raised by a single parent mother that was diagnosed at a very young age as, as manic depressive bipolar who, you know, experimented with drugs on and off a lot. And God bless her for putting, you know, just always fighting for something better for her kids, but made a lot of mistakes at the end of the day. And whether it is with guys, drugs or whatever it may be, seeing drugs in the household and seeing just chaos around finances, it encouraged me to want to go down more of, hey, money. Like we laughed at in the house growing up, right? Like most people. Uh, and the only concern that we ever had was our, our you know, our lights going to get turned off or is rent going to get paid? Or are we going to get kicked out because we snuck in, you know, dogs or something like that, right? And so it took me down a path of well, first off, I found myself wanting to, you know, get financially stable at a younger age because I knew if it was meant to be, it was up to me. Like I always had that mindset, that mentality, because I realized at a young age, like, you know, my mom encouraged me to stay home uh, when I, I know I had school or, or some test coming up. It was important for me to focus on realizing that's probably not the best choice for me because it's going to hold me back uh, in, you know, next week, I'm going to have to get through some tests or whatever. And it's just going to start holding me back in many different ways. And I'm going to have to play catch up. And I, I didn't like that idea at all. It's just probably my personality type, right? At the end of the day. But what I did realize is that started working at, at the age of 12, started experimenting with drugs from my friends when I was in, you know, towards the end of eighth grade and then all throughout high school. And because growing up, 
you know, quote unquote, poor American poor, meaning very blessed, but still on Section 8 housing, food stamps and help from schools as well as churches. And, you know, just Social Security is is my mom's monthly income, about a thousand dollars each month. And then my deadbeat dad barely paying anything towards child support each month, like it was barely getting by. Right. So I realized at a young age that I needed to work. I needed to make something out of myself. But I also because I started getting addicted to marijuana and smoking and kind of laughing and getting released of all that pressure or uh, stuff that young kids shouldn't really be dealing with. I also acknowledge that, hey, I can't afford this. But I should, if I wanted to keep doing this, I, I should uh, be that person within my my group of friends that is supplying it to them so that I can sell it to them and then I can get mine for free in some form or fashion. Entrepreneur spirit inside me, apparently, just going, you know, without the right no male figure guidance or anything like that went down the wrong path. And so it turned into just a snowball effect in the wrong direction that I wasn't aware of. And it just started taking me down this rabbit hole of the devil really, you know, getting a a hold of me in many ways. But thankfully, I got a second chance. I got a second chance because I made a fool out of myself when I moved out to San Diego, California, because I was trying to get away from trouble that I was causing in New Jersey from having guns to my head, knives to my throat, and just people knowing about my name, cops knowing about my name, as well as horrible, you know, relationships that I was in. I realized I had to get out of this toxic environment. I had to go somewhere like a a fresh start. So I moved out to San Diego, California, fell in love with it, and I started fresh, (laughs) is what I would say. Although I really started just being what would be interpreted as a wholesaler. You know, I used to grow out here. I used to stick to myself, but I would basically mail things back to the East Coast and not have to deal with the day-to-day chaos. However, I had an explosion in my apartment making hash oil and realized after burning 40% of my body, had to go through three surgeries, was induced to a coma for a full week, had to learn how to walk again, and then having all these huge pending charges on me and having to fight it in court for two full years and getting, you know, settling for house arrest as well as three years probation and a lot of fines to pay. I realized that I needed to get on a better path, right? I needed some male guidance. I needed a role model. I needed a second chance, but not what I did in the past by moving from coast to coast. I needed real life transformation. And God gave me that opportunity. And he He really resurrected my future because it, it wasn't going in the right direction. He gave me a second chance by showing me mentors that guided me, protected me, set me up for a better path. And then I started falling in love with reading books. And as I was in my spare time trying to figure out how am I going to get this financial freedom, because I still pursued that. I still wanted something bigger and better. I just always had one foot in, one foot out by working in restaurants, you know, the ethically way. And then because I didn't know any better. And then, you know, selling drugs. I didn't want to do that anymore. And so I I broke off all the addictions, all the habits, which was extremely difficult, extremely hard. But because I was in a new group of friends, aka like none, it was helping me out as well because I ended up staying away from all the nonsense. But doing life alone is, is never beneficial. It's never good. And so you're still getting tormented by by the enemy, right? You know, talking all this nonsense in your ear, basically of some things that really aren't going to suit you. So it's important to find that group of circle, right? And I started realizing that I wanted to do real estate, really, really wanted to do real estate. I started doing all the research on real estate and I fell in love with the birth strategy. If that's the first time you've ever heard of it, what that looks like, it's B and then four R's. So it's buy a distressed property, do the full renovation to it, rent it out to a well-qualified tenant that they all should be fighting over it first off because you've just made it brand new, amazing in the neighborhood. And then next, you're going to refinance the property, getting all of your money back out of it and just having a low, small mortgage to it. That cash flows above that. It rents out for higher amounts past that. And then you know, you just repeat that process. So the birth strategy, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, B, and then four R's. And so doing that strategy, 
fell in love with it. I read up on all the books, all the podcasts, all the YouTube. I was donating plasma. I was hustling like a dog, trying to save up money, reading those books. Like I said, books, podcasts, YouTube, donating plasma. I was cleaning trash cans. I was collecting cans. I was doing all these knickknack things to try to, you know, increase income and get rid of debt. And I, I did that. But then I also realized that the traditional route of financing for real estate, it just wasn't going to pan out because I couldn't qualify for much because I was used to working. You know, my tax returns were very limited. And and with all traditional type of financing, you need to show at least one to two years of tax returns. Because I was working in the restaurants, I only showed 30,000, 40,000 max for working in restaurants. You know, adding that up, dividing it by 12 and seeing what the monthly income amount was minus, I think it was like 17, 1900, something like that, that I was making on average per month. On top of that, minusing your expenses like car, and I think they gave me the grace period on everything else. And they just gave me small little buffers to like survive like food, right? And utilities. But I didn't qualify for much in San Diego, to say the least. So I had to figure out when there's a will, there's a way. And I realized that, hey, I could use this thing called credit. And that's where it took me down this rabbit hole. I figured out how to be able to get 0% interest credit. I figured out how to be able to get personal and business. My score was already decent at the time. But afterwards, you know, doing things on my own without any guidance, no mentors, I, I didn't have at the time, I started making a ton of mistakes. So my credit score went down several times, right? Several times. And so I figured out to invest in myself because I, I still wasn't there. And so I ended up getting several hundred thousand at zero percent interest. I was able to take that and go for the small things, you know, and start off with properties in Ohio and that were cheaper, easier to afford. I still did financing with one. I did well, I did financing on the back end. I paid cash for one, which was AK with credit. And then the second one, I did a hard money loan and I did the down payment, the 25% needed with credit. And then I completed the renovations for both of them with all credit as well. That saved me against the contractors. It allowed me, I still made a ton of mistakes with contractors, by the way, because I, even though I didn't necessarily pay with the credit card, I, some of it I did and the rest, I liquidated the cards into cash, then paid. So I still got screwed over by them running off with cash. But long story short, then I would refinance it into traditional type of loans because there was so much equity in the property. There was so much cash flow in the property. I could afford the couple hundred dollars a month type of mortgage and it rented out for so much higher anyway that it just made sense, right? For the banks. So doing this, it allowed me to first off stack up five, 10 properties before I was finally able to leave my restaurant job. The only thing I did know because I was making $10,000 a month off of passive income again, quote unquote, right? And then that allowed me to be able to start realizing that I had something, but I also like I had a gift that I learned and I was able to see so many people wanting to get into real estate, but didn't know how to. Right. So I started teaching people, hey, this is exactly what I did. You can do it, too. And charging them for my time. And that started stacking up, which was a blessing. But on top of that, now I had realized that, hey, I can teach some people, but I also I need some teaching myself. Like, I don't want to be capped out at this. I need to grow and scale. And so credit also allowed me to diversify in investing into myself, having the capital at my fingertips to go all in on mentors and events and networking and getting me out of my comfort zone. Naturally, I'm a very introverted person. So that was a big, big deal to me. Okay. You would never know now, but at the end of the day, I get worn out after a networking event. And so this was a huge transformation for me because I, I needed to get out of my comfort zone. I needed to get comfortable doing lives. I needed to build upon my brand. I needed to help out more people, which brought in more income because it was taking up my time. But I also needed to invest in me. I needed to get myself around high level people so that I could see what the hell are you guys doing so differently? What is so special about you? If you can do it, then why can't I? And I've always had that approach. And so I started taking this information, getting myself, you know, bumping knuckles with high level people, building friendships, but also 
learning from them and doing life together. And and it's so true when they say you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. I couldn't relate to that anymore. Honest to God, that is the strongest type of impression of exactly what's transformed him into my life in so many ways. And so, you know, my very first mentor is $400 a month. To me, that was incredibly difficult when I was making $1,900 a month, right? And this was back in 2015. And it was terrifying. And then I, I just started dating Jen at the time. And, you know, I talked her into doing it. Hey, you want to do this with me? And hey, can you come up with some money too to do this? And it's like, man, we were so young, so naive. And even that mentor at the time, he ended up being a scam artist. But guess what? I still networked. I still ended up writing a book. I I still ended up learning a lot. I improved on my on so many skills to get out of my comfort zone and coaching abilities and, and structure. And even though he was wrong, doesn't mean that I didn't take, I demanded it an ROI because the $400 a month to me was everything. That was scary times. That was like one or two mortgages to me at the time because after I refied, some of my mortgages were cheap. And so I just, I went all in on myself and I always demanded an ROI. And so then I went to the, instead of the $400 a month, I went to the next level, $10,000, a flat fee for six months or a year, then 15, then it was a 25, then it was a 30, then it was a 50, 80, 100, 150, you know, and the list goes on in the last several years, I've been investing a quarter million into myself each and every year. And I'm excited for the simple fact of when I get to a half a million or a million dollars a year type of investment into myself to get myself around high level individuals that have also invested that type of capital into themselves. And there's something special. There's something unique. You you naturally just when you get into those rooms, you lay everything out on the table. And it's because you know how hard it was for you to get there and you naturally have the respect for the same person in the seat right next to you that did exactly the same. And even though you guys most likely both have like high level products, knowledge, something special about you that you can bring to the table and like you need something like you're in this room for a certain reason because you need something, you also have something to give. And so when you just lay everything out on the table and you're giving it freely, other people are doing it too. You're building long-term, you know, lifelong relationships and just incredible growth. And that's exactly what I saw since, you know, my, my over, what looks like to the public, my overnight success. I've been doing this since 2000. I've been playing around with credit since 2011, 2012. And I've been investing in real estate with credit because I was on the sideline for two, two and a half, three years. I invested in real estate 2015. And now we have ground up constructions going. We have private money lending, hard money lending. We have rental income passive. We have Airbnb brings in a great deal and we have amazing tax benefits. Legally, I'm not paying taxes, like morally, ethically doing it the right way because I have amazing type of bookkeeping from networking, tax preparation, tax filing, like people that literally do hula hoops around the type of, you know, the legal system in morally, ethically ways and ways that we can have and make a a boatload of money, six, seven, eight million dollars a year, taking that and being able to reinvest, not just into ourselves, not just into our business, but also being able to help out a ton of people throughout the year. And so it's a huge blessing. It's something that I'm very thankful for. Um, I am above and beyond blessed and I acknowledge that. But what I would say is I'm not anything special. And I know most people like that would uh, like prep somebody like myself for this call or something, they would say, hey, don't don't take yourself off the pedestal. Let them keep you on the pedestal. The simple fact is I'm not on a pedestal. Don't put me on a pedestal. I used to put mentors on a pedestal and then I realized like, dude, you might be crushing it in this area, but you suck over here. Or like your marriage is falling apart or you cheat on her like you or you do these things or like you don't have any money saved in saved up, you know, you blow it just as fast as it comes in or whatever it may be all like your relationship with God isn't there. You, you know, friends are, are crap, you know, whatever it is. Right. So I realized to never put people on a pedestal, but it, you may be um, me a couple years ago and, and putting people on a pedestal right now. I encourage you never do that, but just identify with somebody that is where you potentially want to be and try to soak, like squeeze out whatever they got 
squeeze out, ask all those questions, figure out what is really stopping you from getting to that next, that next piece, that next level, punching through your ceiling and realizing that real estate is life changing in so many ways. Having an active based income coming in is very important too. And I'm a majority of people I, I really would never recommend like there's certain nine to five jobs that are going to be able to get you great security, great networking, great benefits. And if you have that and you're happy, then I encourage you to stay there. For the average other person, you you know, figuring out if you're at a dead end job like I was at restaurants, you know, that's not going to ever get me financial freedom. That's never going to get me out of the rat race. That's never it's going to be a very long, drawn out season of seasons of seasons of like 20, 30 years to potentially get somewhere. And so you're going to want to figure out another way, another alternative, another option to be able to get the income that you need to be able to invest in yourself because it takes money to make money in many ways, not every way, but you know, with the proper intelligence, aka the proper mentorship, the proper education, that's going to be able to unlock so many things that can unlock the ways that you can get into investments without your own money. OPM, that's the name of the game, other people's money. And I like to use the bank's money. And I'm just so grateful to be able to figure out the importance behind credit. You know, like you truly cannot outsource your pushups, right? I heard this quote such a long time ago when I was getting started in real estate by Brandon Turner from Bigger Pockets and an amazing real estate investor, by the way. But as I was learning that and I heard it, it just resonated with me so much. Like, you know, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. You can't point the finger at, at all these people over here. It's time to point the thumb and like really identify like, hey, this is up to me. And I can't, if I want to get buff, I can't have somebody else do it for me. You know, I gotta, I can have somebody hold me accountable. I can hire all coaches. I can prep for it and prepare. I can have smart goals attached to it. But realizing that if I wanted financial freedom, I needed a a financial stability. I needed a foundation. I needed the proper education. I needed to invest in myself. I needed to figure out when there's a will, there's a way. And I started figuring out that these banks want to lend to us. And I rather borrow from them, but I rather do it at 0% interest. I like using OPM from the banks because they use money for me. Like we all put money in the banks and just let it sit there and pay our bills and have our day to day. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's all fine and dandy, but they're not giving us any percentage back for borrowing our money and lending it out to Joe or John or, or Tim or, you know, or whoever, <laughs> you know, or even yourself. Like, hey, I got a bunch of money in the bank if I need to take a loan, but I'd rather keep the money in the bank and I wanted some more. You know, why they, they charge you a grip for that? And so they lend it back out when all the money that we put into the banks, they give us 0% back, very little, you know, 0. 0.001, 2%, 3% if we're very, very lucky, pennies on the dollar. And then at the end of the day, they lend it back out to us nine times over and they average, the banks average 500 to 3,000% interest on that money nine times over. They're making billions of dollars each and every year just off of fees and overdraft fees and all these other nonsense, not having enough money and all these rules and, and stipulations. If you don't keep a minimum of $1,500 in the bank, we'll hit you with a fee. And people don't know and people are uneducated and, and because it's not being taught in school. And so it's devastating in so many ways. If you don't figure out that foundation that I was just talking about, you can't outsource your pushups. If you want financial freedom, if you want a financial future that's better than where you're currently at, which we all should, we all shouldn't just give up. Even if you hit a billion dollars, if you hit the lottery today, congratulations. What are you going to do afterwards besides pay your 55% in taxes? And then what? You're going to sit on the beach like everybody thinks or says initially? It's the most ignorant statement ever. I'm going to sit on the beach with a couple of cocktails for how long? How long until that gets old? Two, three, four months? And then what? Okay. And then after you travel the world, then what? You're going to want to do this with people that you love, that accept you for who you are and, and really want to be able to grow and scale. Like when you have purpose, when you find purpose and you look deep within to realize like, hey, I, I got something really special and talented. I've already been there, done that. And the credit game, like I've, I personally, me, Brandon Elliott, credit council elite founder and CEO, I've been able to master something that has taken me a boatload of time. I lost over nine different bank relationships, over a million dollars in funding in the past. I've been able to help out thousands of people at this point, get 
tens of millions, 20, 30, 40, 50 million plus in funding. And so we have something really special because I've been doing it for, for 10 plus years. I've been doing this. I've been specializing in this. I've been helping out a huge amount of people. And so over the years, I've been able to identify what works, what doesn't and and things in between and how to massage it the proper way when the banks and the school systems, they're, they're not telling you this. And so I say all that to say this, that it's important to rig, figure out like if you want something bigger and better and you're not and you like draw the line in the sand and you say, hey, I'm not going to settle for less and I want something bigger. I want something better. And I know there's some kind of ceiling over me right now. I want to keep blasting through that to get to the to my next floor, make this current ceiling my next floor and then see what you know what I run into then. Like that's what it's about. And so doing this over the years, we've been able to help out a ton of people at Credit Council Lead. I'm very blessed to say that we're making just huge leaps and bounds to, to be able to grow, scale businesses, be able to diversify, to be able to take advantage of this bull market that we're in currently just getting started for crypto, to be able to show people the opportunities with the real estate, but doing it in the fashion of credit and doing it at 0% interest. You know, our bank relationship managers have the applications locked in place with all of our members at Credit Council Elite. We have something really special, something really amazing in so many ways. So very thankful, very blessed. And if you want a bigger and better future, I highly encourage you to check out right here, right now, creditcounselelite.com. That's www.creditcounselelite.com. Stop sleeping on this. Watch our quick 10 minute video that explains more in detail what the hell I'm talking about, what we really do, how we specialize in it, and how we can better serve you. And then afterwards, you'll have the opportunity to book a call with us to get a second opinion, like today. And when you jump on that call, we ask you to show up, participate, and like, you know, tell us where you're currently at, what your goals are, and, and we'll give you the blueprint on what it's going to look like to get there and the obstacles that you're about to run into. And then we'll be able to show you like, th this is totally complimentary, by the way. I pay for all of our assessment coaches to be able to sit down with you. And I've trained them up. I've, I've been able to go with them. They're all internal. We have 24 employees that work for Credit Counts Elite currently, and we're growing and scaling and we're making a big, huge impact. And we will turn Credit Counts Elite over the years. This, this will take time. But my big goal is to make this into a household name that we are the leaders and founders of really making the, the life-changing results that uh, aren't being taught, this financial literacy that simply isn't being taught in the school system. And of course, there's a huge agenda from the left side, as well as just politics in general and, and from you know the government in general trying to hold back this information. But the simple fact is that it's out there. The banks want to lend to you and there's 0% interest available to you no matter where you're at, no matter if you're 18 years old or 70, no matter if you have no job or you're a serial entrepreneur, no matter if you are working as a teacher or and bringing in 30, 40,000 a year or you're bringing in 40 million a year. It doesn't matter. We can teach you the techniques, whether you have bad credit and you're in the 400s or you're in the, the low 800s. We can show you how to be able to get incredible results in the next 30 to 90 days at Credit Counts Elite, getting up to two, three, four, even 500 or even $600,000 in 0% interest funding, plus the sign-up bonuses that, that come attached with that. So I encourage you that if you are on the fence about talking about credit, talking about your finances, talking about your future, if you are so laser beam focused on what you're working on today, I respect it. I get it. And I understand it. But finances is something that you should do every single day. It's 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 a good idea. Just like a shower, you should be taking one every day. It's a good idea to be working out and improving your health and your stamina each and every day. For, for the well-being of your body and, and for your mental health and stability for, for generations to come, okay, each and every day. So I encourage just like just like all other areas, you need money for everything, not just to invest in yourself, but you, you need money to live, to live comfortably. You don't want to be just getting by, just struggling. So I encourage you, figure out this financial foundation that isn't being taught in school 
and stop wasting time, stop wasting money because you're already paying for this one way or another. I encourage you to start saving money by getting into Credit Counts Elite. You'll save at least 100000 to even possibly and or making $100,000 just from the information that we're teaching in Credit Counts Elite. We've had many people do it. So I encourage you to look no further, but check out Credit Counts Elite today so that you can jump on a call, get a second opinion from us and understand this, that we have money back warranty in place and we truly want to serve you. We we want to serve you at the highest capacity and, and really be able to over deliver. So if you need a couple hundred thousand, you need 50, 60, 70 thousand, don't come to us. If you want one, two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand, really sit down with us and, and we'll show you how to get there without giving up a bunch of equity to your business, without like jumping on Shark Tank and, and giving out all this money. We can help you with the same type of information, same resources, and be able to take you to the next level with OPM from the banks. So with all that being said, I've been able to change my life with real estate. Credit was the catalyst to do it. If you grew up like me, you screw up making all the mistakes under the sun and having kind of all the odds against you, but still determined to make yourself successful and you're just not there yet, this message was really for you, for you. Okay, no matter where you're at in life, if you want something bigger and better, stop wasting time. Time is your biggest asset. You might not realize it right now because you have a bunch of it at your fingertips and and you typically don't have much money because of that. But once you start making a ton of money, once you once we teach you the secret sauce and get you the funding that you need at your fingertips, you don't need to use it, but you'll have opportunities that will show you how to be able to put it to work. You know, at that point, you'll have probably less time. And now it's time to start buying back your time and start to have that fine balance and to find your purpose to be able to make an impact, but live comfortably, right? And enjoy life on your own terms with whoever you want, wherever you want whenever you want, because finances aren't going to hold you back. We'll teach you how to travel hack. We'll teach you how to be able to diversify, grow and scale. And so I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by people like yourself that end up, you know, listening to the free content and want to take themselves to the next level. And I, I just encourage you to make that commitment into yourself to at least get a second opinion from us today so that you can book a call, understand more about what we got going on here at Credit Counts Elite. And then afterwards, you can determine what makes sense for you. So love you guys all so much. If you haven't already, subscribe to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. It means the world to me and uh, nothing but respect and love for you guys. You'll get the news notification every week. Leave that five-star review. Truly appreciate each and every one of you. And if you haven't booked a call with us yet for Credit Counts Elite, make sure you do that ASAP. And we'll see you on the inside. Till next time, guys. God bless. Peace out. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.